Hi, I'm Joe Mullings, and welcome to an episode of Untitled and Unfiltered. We are sliding into, gosh, early days of this whole coronavirus. And uh, I am coming to you from the 190 studios today. So if it looks like my typical show backdrop is different, it is. We're shooting out of the 190 labs today. Uh, part of that is uh, we've got a uh, commitment to one of our other shows, which is going to be on the other side. And this uh, episode of Untitled and Unfiltered slides into that a little bit. So um, this is directed at people in general who are managing through what's going on in the workplace right now and probably over indexes a little bit to um, business owners because um, right now business owners are um, probably in a position of one, fear, um, two, uh, uh, sort of not knowing what's happening on the back end of this because nobody knows where the back end is and the back end is going to be a totally different world than we're in right now. Most business owners, we, live paycheck to paycheck just like some of the people who are living in a lower wage uh, lifestyle. And I mean that because a lot of times entrepreneurs are doing this as a choice in life and it's a calling for them. And a lot of us will, at risk, um, put everything on the line because we love what we're doing. And so we're facing a lot of questions right now without any clear answers. But today I wanna just have a dialogue with you and have, have some thoughts run through your mind. I'm gonna offer you up some things to think about. Uh, I'm also gonna turn off my laptop here. Uh, sound because stay with me because it's on and I'm getting all kinds of emails in from people who were super uh, thankful for something we put out yesterday so let me just kill this stay with me <sighs> boom there we go so let's talk about it first we're in a strange new world we're in 2020 you started your business plan in 2020 with uh, a number of things and I bet you at the top of that was revenue because most of the time it is. Revenue is the gas that you put in the tank in order to make things happen. I don't care if it's growing out your business, uh, new facilities, adding headcount, employees. Revenue makes the world go round. So let me first say is you've got to, for now, throw your 2020 revenue plans that you wrote Q4 of last year out the door uh, because otherwise you're gonna make yourself absolutely insane. Um, now, having said that, it is going to be a scorecard, but that scorecard now is going to be a survival scorecard. And I don't want to be too dark here, but if you think of everything as a survival scorecard moving forward, uh, when you come out the other end, if we've got an extra bit of dry powder in the keg, everything is going to be better. But I do want you to think of it as a survival scorecard. And that survival scorecard is going to be people, it's going to be plans, it's going to be marketing, it's going to be business relationships, and it's going to be new rules of engagement with your teammates as well. So those are the scorecards today we're going to talk about. So let's go first, throwing out the plan. It's a fluid environment we're in right now. I had a meeting with my COO, and she and I had an agreement two days ago. And then yesterday morning, I sent her an email and she said to me, I just th I thought we just talked about this and we agreed on something else. And she was right. But the environment is so dynamic right now and so fluid right now that things are changing day to day. And this is not what we're used to operating in, but you're going to have to become accustomed to operating with that on a two-week basis. Here's currently what I'm advising. Here's what I'm doing is I've got what I call a two-week, three-day rolling plan. What that means is there is no possible way for me to look out on the business horizon in the current environment we're in any more than two weeks at a time. But what I'm constantly doing is I am rolling my plan on a three-day evaluation because the information coming in is so rapid right now and things are so dynamic right now there's no way that I can stay locked down like I've had in the past on committing to a month plan or a quarterly plan or an annual plan. That would be just being thick-headed and, and, and honestly suicide in today's environment. You can certainly reference that, but you should be rolling on the two-week overall plan, three-day rolling plan. It's that fluidic right now. 
So again, like I said to you, here's an example that you can take home. I had to make a business decision a month ago. I made it. We agreed on something my COO and myself did. Then three days ago, we reconfirmed that in the environment where we're in. But I got a piece of information two days ago, and I got back to her and said, I'm doing this. And she had every right to ask me, but then I explained to her the dynamic. Now, whether or not she agreed with me or not is a different subject, but I had to make that adjustment on that three-day rolling plan. So that's it on the planning side. The big takeaway there is you're in a fluidic environment. Two-week plan, three-day rolling, meaning you're evaluating every day on that three-day roll. Look, just today, I've got 35 employees. Two days ago, I had 31 of them showing up at the office. Today, I've got maybe nine left in the office. Is it the ideal situation? Uh Uh-uh. Have I had to pivot on how I'm communicating with them? Uh Uh-huh. Is the communication plan I have right now the best one? Nope, but it was the best one I had in the last 24 hours. And then I'm going to refine that plan in 24 hours looking forward. So you've got to remain dynamic in this environment. So that's number one. Number two, new rules of engagement. On the personal side especially, take nothing personal. I had some outsiders come into my organization. I mean outsiders, people who flew here from another part of the country. They're business partners. They came in, and it made half my staff and probably more than half my staff jinky. And I get it. I absolutely get it. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a calculated risk that I had to take. And then I had to go tell the partners who came in the office, I said, look, I've got people in my organization who are very uncomfortable with outsiders coming in right now. I need you to, when you meet with them, to sit more than six feet away from them. Now, could you imagine if setting that, said that, at least down here in Florida, even five days ago? It wasn't on the table. But now it's very acceptable to be on the table. Taking it a step further, I meet with my team, my leadership team, who's still here in the office, and I sit across my conference room from them. I would hug them at the same time, but I'm not sure they would be super comfortable with that, and my HR person would probably get pissed at me for that in the first place anyway. But my point is, is you've got to make sure that you're not judging the other person's fear or their insecurities or the stories that they're putting in their mind that's going on right now because everything is in a dynamic environment. So just make sure that as things roll out, nothing is going to be personalized. It's all on the run. And all of these rules that we've had to live by socially are all up in the air. And just know that it feels like, and I believe this to be true, everybody's on the same team right now. It's just that we're going to, commute our, com- we're going to communicate ourselves differently. We're going to go ahead and sort of reveal our fears differently. And I have found live in my organization, even in the last one hour, that it's very, very important for us to communicate those things with each other. Because right now, the, over, the overlying veil on everything that's going on right now, the words you're picking, the behaviors you're making, and the insecurities you're feeling are from an overlying fear of the shit show we're in the middle of right now. The people you're working with are fantastic people. The people around you are fantastic people but they're responding to fear. And don't take any of that personal. So that's number two. Number three, business relationships. Listen, I got an email the other day. I, I, I've got, I've, I'm really particular on the partners I pick in my business world. I'm super, super particular. In fact, we were just writing up a manifest. I was talking to one of my senior leadership ops people. And when we pick a new partner in a business relationship, we send out a document that we're crafting right now is saying, look, we move at the speed of light. We will, we will expect a, a, an answer back from you within 12 hours when we have an ask for you. I don't need an answer, but I need for you to acknowledge via text or email or a telephone call that you received my ask, and you're going to tell me exactly when you're going to get my answer on the calendar. That's how aggressive we are. And before we get into bed with somebody, we want to make sure it's a really good relationship. And with that, we ran our bankers through that, and they were super with that. And you know what I got the other day? I got an email back from my bank that says, our bank is giving out interest-free loans right now to get whoever the business people are through this climate. Currently, currently, my firm does not need that. We've got good cash. We run a very, very fiscally prudent organization. But even with that, I told my head of finance, head of ops, get on the phone with the bank, 
talk to them personally, tell them to look at our financial accounts, and I want to get in line for that loan. And I want to be pre-qualified for that loan just in case. Because I don't want to be scrambling 120 days from now when I'm getting a little lighter in the funds because I don't know what's going to happen. But what I am going to do is I'm going to start lining up those lines of credit that the banks are putting out, and you want to get in line earlier for those because it's going to be a shit show later when everybody's rushing to those. Okay? So that's number one. Number two, talk to your landlord. Your landlord is not going to want to have you be lost as a tenant. And what you want to do is get in this struggle with them together. They're also, if they're smart, going to be talking to their banks about their mortgage payments. And you're not asking for a discount. What you're asking for is consideration if you need it. And you're going to tell them, net, net, I'm going to keep you whole on the entire year. But I may need some help in the month of March or April or May or June. And look, your receivables may be huge. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. All the people who write those checks or sign those documents for those checks to go out for you to be paid are going to be working remote in the large corporations you're doing business with. And so that pay that you have on your contract of net 30 or net 10, you're not going to be seeing it. So while you'll have that money on the books, don't count on seeing it in a regular schedule cadence. And so therefore, you're going to be light on money. So talk to your landlord and say, listen, I'm going to keep you whole on the, let's just call it 5K a month I owe you. But over the next few months, it's going to be 2,500, 2,500, 2,500. But I promise to make it up with 7,500, 7,500, 7,500 through the summer. Set that up. Have the conversation now. You're better off having it now when you're not desperate and silly. And then the landlord could start planning for it themselves. And then do, this, do the same with your vendors. Keep them whole as much as you can because they're going to be struggling. If they're your vendors now, you do not want them to go out of business. So the same way that you're hoping that your terms are picked up, talk to your vendors and see what you can do, what would be important for them, no promises, but what would be helpful to them that you might be able to provide them with should you have that flexibility. It goes both ways. You can't only ask. You have to potentially talk to your vendors who maybe deliver your coffee, who deliver your dry cleaning, who deliver your food. I wouldn't be doing takeout, which is a whole nother ridiculous thing. It's like, don't go to restaurants, but do takeout. And I'm sorry to the restaurateurs. I'm like, what, is takeout's immune to this COVID thing? I don't get that, but I digress. All right, so it's time for you to look at that. And it may also be time for you to spend. Here's an idea. I'm not a social strategist, but from what I understand, and my team will be off camera here and they may confirm or negate, the algorithm that you pay for on social platforms is directly related to the amount of the ask on the posts that you want to put out and the people you want to reach. I'm going to guess those algorithms right now probably have the lowest ask in quite a while because people are pulling back on their money. But on the flip side of that, Think about how many people are sitting home right now and there's no basketball on, there's no soccer on, there's no tennis, there's no baseball, there's nothing on TV. So the home workers are on the internet on their social platforms where you have a higher probability of a hit. So that might be a good spend for you. It might be worth overspending in that area based upon your strategy on, on, on client acquisition. So your client acquisition cost goes down. And if you offer, if you offer tremendous value and tremendous service in that area, you're going to retain more clients as well. So that, your business relationships. Four, and probably the most important asset right now, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be the, one, the most difficult one for the entrepreneurs and the business owners to get their heads wrapped around. Your people. Your people right now, you need to figure out how to retain them all. And we haven't even moved into the difficult part yet. You are going to have the hardest time looking at your bank account and retaining all your people when you don't have the gas coming in. And you're going to have to talk to them and say, listen, across the board, the same way you might want to do with your landlord, I'm going to ask everybody to take a 10% cut, 15% cut. 
and I'm going to make it up to you retroactively by the end of the year, depending on your cash flow situation. You want to get creative. Maybe what you want to do is they go to part-time. So look at your workforce, look at the style of work you have, and see what works. And again, staying, I know the attorneys are going to be yelling at me, you know, ADA and EEOC and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into the details on that stuff. But what you want to do is you want to sit down with them if you're really that tight and figure out how do we get through this together. And the people who are working for entrepreneurs, for God's sake, understand what those entrepreneurs are going through. Beside them having to protect their families, beside them having to protect themselves, the entrepreneurs cannot stay home. I guarantee you they're showing up the dry cleaners. They're showing up at their recruiting firms. They're showing up at their production companies because somebody's got to keep that stuff going on. And so, you know, certainly ask them how they are when you see them, but also ask them what you can do to help. Because you just showing up for work or you working from home is awesome, but there might be some other things that you can do to help them. So you need to think there too, because it's too easy right now to fall into a me, me, me cocoon. Super easy, and it makes sense. This is what we do in these primal situations. We protect our families, we protect ourselves, we protect our stuff. But you wanna make sure, the same way that you don't want your vendors to go out of business, you don't want your entrepreneur or your business owner to go out of business. So make sure you do that, just please, make sure you do that on the people side, on the other side. Look, over the next, my guess is, this is totally without evidence, I'm going to say this is going to go on for, this is middle end of March. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm spitballing this. It's going to declare itself like this. I think what we're going to do is we're going to, depend on the part of the country you're in right now, right? If you're in New York City, it may be a little longer because you're talking about a concentration of people. But if you're down here in Palm Beach, Florida, where you don't have the concentration, it may be different. But here's how it's going to roll out. You're going to have concentric circles. Eventually, people are going to go, okay, I'm not staying at home anymore. Beside being stir crazy, they're going to start to sort of think through the risk and say, all right, I'm going to go to my office and I'm going to work there. And that's the immediate concentric circle. And then after that concentric circle, it's going to go out a little further than that. And from there, what it's going to do is you're going to start to socialize a little more. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not acknowledging that any of this is correct or incorrect. Then you're going to start to socialize any, a, a few times more. Right? And then after that happens, but this is the big concentric circle that's way out, people are going to start to travel. I know personally, I just had a conversation with uh, 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 my COO, and I said, I don't know how much I'm going to travel this year for the rest of the year. I don't know whether I travel commercial, whether I try private, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't know if it's a required. After I get through this challenging period over the next probably 9 to 12 weeks, to move to my first concentric circle where my people start coming back into the office, I'm gonna to need to double down, put my head down, and go hard to get us where we need to get. And again, try not to have these artificial self-imposed deadlines of December 31st, that that's the, that's the score on the board, because you'll drive yourself nuts. But I believe to get everybody's business back at least to where it was, it's gonna take a good six to eight months from where we are today. So that's four, five. For those of you who know me, I think one of the biggest things you can do right now is build out your brand, build out your reputation. And you don't have to spend money to do that. If you do build out your brand and reputation using money, cool, I mentioned it earlier, double down on some social. It's probably gonna be the cheapest it's gonna be of all, of all time, at least from what we can foresee right now. And you're gonna get a bigger reach because you've got a captive audience. But on the marketing side, building your brand in a low cost way, look, Depending on what you are, I don't care if you do Facebook, I don't care if you do Twitter, I don't care if you do LinkedIn. Become a news aggregator in your marketplace. It's the cheapest thing to do. You're sitting at home anyway. Turn off prices right, turn off Wheel of Fortune. Become a news aggregator if you're in the cannabis business. Aggregate all the news on all the top headlines, put it out on content on your platform, whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, however you conduct your business, and become that news aggregator because the people in your industry are gonna get tired of watching TV as well or working from home and gonna to wanna to infotain themselves. 
And the way you can infotain them is aggregating all that stuff in the marketplace and deliver it to them in a nice, tidy bow. I mean, we do that in one of my businesses, TMG Pulse, right now, and we do that for you 24-7. But I thought of it yesterday. I'm like, man, that's the easiest thing to do, and I stay on top of the market. And then the second part of that is, so now you get another product out of that. The next product, after you've aggregated all that content, now what I want you to do is unwind it for people. Like our firm unwinds it for career choices. Maybe you want to unwind it for business opportunities that once we return. So maybe it's a supply chain opportunity that your clients would use. Maybe it's creation of a new product in a market that's evolving from what we've just went through. I don't know what it is, but put some gas on the fire up here and look at how you can use one activity to offer multiple value propositions for the people that you send you, you sell to. And again, think of some for yourself, but the easiest ones are aggregate the news, be that news center, and then two, unwind the headlines, and then what it means on the marketing. And then finally, look, Huh. This is the one I saved for last. Life's about consequences. I happen to live in a sales environment. And for the most part, a lot of you do too, and most entrepreneurs do. We live in a sales environment. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a disclaimer on this right up front because those who follow me know I am not insensitive. I have a tremendous amount of empathy. And safety first, family first. Here's what I want you to remember, though. There's a back end to this. There's a back end to this. It's, there's an other side we're going to come out. And if you're in a sales environment, and if you stopped your regular life, I don't know what today's date is. What's today's date? If you stopped your life on March 16th or, 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 or 15th, Monday, when everything really hit the fan in the United States. You don't want to, when we come out of this three, four months from now, be starting again on March 17th or 16th in a sales environment. Those who run sales, and you're gonna start nodding your head right now, you know if you take one day off, it screws you two days moving forward downrange. You know that. If I take off a week, which is very, very rare, but that's my own sickness, I lose two weeks of reasonable revenue. So there are consequences to you taking time off. I'm not saying being out of the office. Don't mistake it for that. Don't send the hate mail on that. I'm talking about taking time off from your A game. If you're a salesperson, one day off, two days lost revenue. You might get sick. Look, there's a 98% chance if you catch this virus that you're going to get sick. There's a 20% chance you might end up in the hospital. I don't know what is it, like a 2% chance you might end up in ICU. All of that sucks. There's a 100% chance that there's an other side to this. And waiting there is your mortgage and your private school and your car payment and your vacation, and your college tuition, none of that's going away. So when you wake up every day, and if you're choosing to work from your office or you're choosing to work from your home, you better start your day at 7 a.m. like a gangster doing your work. And don't make up an excuse that nobody's taking the phone calls. And don't make up an excuse that nobody else you can't connect with somebody. That's all bullshit. And you're more likely to die from stress and cortisol overload three months from now because you chose to sort of coast while the world paused, I think you're going to have more stress then in your life than you're, 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 you're feeling right now. You know, I'm always unfiltered, but I'm always truthful. And what I don't want to happen to you is you're left holding that slacker bag 90 days from now after this all blows over. I'm Joe Mullings, untitled and unfiltered.